Hey guys, in this lecture we're going to be teaching you about I squared C. So let's take a look at what I squared C is. Say I want to transfer 8 bits of data, say 101010, or in hexadecimal it can be 0xAA. So our master wants to transfer it to the slave. We can do this by having a clock line, which clocks in our data, and then we have 8 bits of data. So bit 0 to bit 7. Now, as you can see, it consumes a lot of pins and it may be quick because you have parallel transfer, but you want to minimize the amount of pins that you have. And by using this scheme, you can easily transfer 8 bits of data. Now, what if you wanted to send more than 8 bits? And also, we have a physical pin constraint. You can quickly run out of pins by using amount of parallel data. So to counter this, we use I squared C which was created by Philips. So I squared C stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit. That's why they call it I squared C or IIC. So how I squared C works is that you got a clock line and you got a data line. And these are basically pull-up resistors called R1 and R2. So here, they normally pull up to 3.3 volts or 5 volts, depending on the voltage levels of the master and slave. So now what's good about I squared C is that you can have up to 128 devices on the same bus. So I can have multiple masters or I can have multiple slaves all in one bus. And all this happens while saving on pin space or pin allocations. So now we can send our 8-bit data to any one of these devices. So these devices can either be like an Arduino, they can be an accelerometer, temperature sensor, EEPROM, memory, or an OLED display. There can be a variety of peripherals on the same bus. And this makes I could see really versatile and flexible. So let's look at how it works. So we start off with our start bit. So our start bit goes from the master to the slave. And a start bit usually looks like this, where you got your data line, which is SDA, and that goes on first before your clock. Your clock goes on a bit later, and that signifies a start bit to your slave. Next, we send the control byte. Now, the control byte is also known as the device address. So we send the device address, so no matter how many devices we have, we can always identify which device we want to speak to. So the device that we're using is the microchip 24LC256. Now this device has an address of hex 50 or 101000. And that's what we send. We're sending a 101000. And the data signal usually goes up straight after the start bit. So when the clock is high, then we enter in our data bit, and over here we make it a zero, and then so on and so forth. Another thing about I squared C is that you can either have a seven bit address, or you can have a 10 bit address. Now with a 10 bit address, you can have up to 1024 devices on the same I squared C bus, which makes it really awesome. So now for this device, the first four bits are fixed. So the 101 is fixed. These ones A2, A1, and A0, these ones are physical pins on your chip. So these ones can be set by placing them high or low, depending on what address you want to set. So there's a limited amount of EEPROMs that you can put of the same device on one I squared C bus. Next, after that comes our read-write bit. So we send our read-write bit. This tells the device that we want to either read or write from the device. A0 signifies a write. A1 signifies a read. Next, after we sent our first bunch of data, our slave will return saying we acknowledged. So it sends an acknowledge bit to the master and the master will see, okay, we have communications with our slave and thus we can proceed to send the next bit of data. So as you can see, a0 is a acknowledge and a NAC is a1 or NAC or not acknowledge. So looking at the data sheet of that device, we already mentioned that we got a start bit, we got the 1010, and we put in our address bits as 000. And then we send a zero because we want to write to the device. Next, we're gonna send the address byte. So over here, we have the most significant and the least significant byte. And then we send our data. Now over here, we have a 15-bit address. But over here, it could be 16, but this is a don't care. So if you take 2 to the 15, we have around about 32 kilobytes of data that we can write to this device. 
That's 32 times 8 bits. So after we send our address register, right? So next we send our address register. This is the address of where we want to write our data to. So we want to write our data to address 1. So how we do that? We, this is x, so it doesn't matter if it's a 0 or 1. And then we send zeros throughout this thing. And then we proceed with the least significant bit, which will make this bit 1. So this here signifies an address of 1. Thereafter, we send our data. Now we want to send our data as 101010, where we start with our most significant bit as D7. D0 is our least significant bit. And we have to send it in this order. And just remember, after each byte, we send the slave sends an acknowledge back to our master. And then finally, we send our stop bit, also known as a pause bit. We are finished with our transaction, and now you can go into idle state. And our slave will stay in idle state until we give it another start bit, where we start our transaction all over again. So what if you want to read? Looking at the data sheet, we do the same process, but minus the data. So we bring our device address. We set that it we want to write. We are going to our address. And then we start it again. We send our start bit. But now we put a 1 over here, which signifies a read. Now because we sent our address byte before, we can now just proceed to read our data. And this data will come from our slave to the master. And once that's done, we send a not acknowledge, and then we send a pause bit, or stop it. And then we send a stop or pause bit. Okay, so let's look at the code. This is the code that you can use for the Arduino. And this is to communicate with the EEPROM, which is the 27LC256 EEPROM chip. So we set our device address as 0x50, which is hexadecimal 50. And we want to write to the EEPROM, we write our device address, the address location that we want to send to. Our address we set as 0 for the moment. And then we send our data, which is 0x or hex AA, which is 10101010. And using the same process, we write our device address. We shift our bits so that it includes our address. We send our data and then we end our transmission. Most of the stuff that we sent is incorporated in the Y library, which is also known as the I2C library, but they call it the Y library. And the same thing for the read from the EEPROM. We send our device address, and using the y.request form, we can get our data from our I2C bus. Over here, it says if our I2C bus is available, we want to write our receive data to our data, and then we return our data. It's quite simple and very easy to read and write from our EEPROM. Okay, so that is it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next video. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.